Hello, my name is Emma Rose and today is my birthday and I'm 22 and I'm going to be sharing my story of when I was diagnosed with alopecia unifilasis. I was 19 when I was diagnosed. I was dropped to work by my then boyfriend who noticed two strips around my ears at the back. I didn't believe what he told me that my hair was falling out, well who would, like what girl would, and I went in to work and rang my doctors who said to me that I couldn't be losing my hair because I was too young and they asked me to check my arms and see how much hair had been missing off my body and I looked at my arms and there was hair missing but I wasn't aware that I had been losing hair. I also made them aware that I had been losing my eyebrows um, for since April time um, where I went at that time I also had an operation. The next day I went and got a blood test and I got my results five days later. In the five days of me getting the results I was a mess, I couldn't stop crying, didn't know why, I kept losing my hair still, I'd literally just touch my hair like this and I'd have like quite a bit, fair bit of hair in my hands. And when I got my results I phoned up and it was my day off, it was on a Tuesday and they told me that my bloods were fine and they went to get off the phone like normal and I said no I need to come in because I need to know why I'm losing my hair. I went to the doctor, I was told that I had alopecia areata I, just, I couldn't even listen to a word that they said because I was 19. I didn't want to have alopecia, like who would? I'd only just started work. I just kept crying. All I wanted to know was how much hair am I going to lose? When is it going to fall out? Will it grow back? Will I have to wear a wig? That's all I wanted to know. I left the doctors and I was really scared about telling my family because it's hard to tell your parents that you're losing your hair at such a young age and I also had a niece who was only seven months old and she wouldn't have been able to understand or anything and how could I cover it from her because I didn't want to scare her. I ended up phoning my mum and I told her and she was quite surprised because she didn't know what was, she didn't know much about alopecia either. So I went home a couple of hours later, I spoke to my dad and I was just hysterical, I couldn't even like think straight. But the next day, I went out to work up, just acted normal, so I thought I'm not gonna let this drag me down. And I went to work, I was crying, um, and I work with children, so it's hard, so you can't cry in front of children because it's obviously emotions. And I ended up leaving work early to go to the doctors. When I walked into the doctors, they signed me off because of how I was being, and they signed me for anxiety for a week uh, to come to terms with like, the diagnosis. After a week, I went back to the doctors for a checkup, and they still wasn't happy with how I was doing because I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, I lost a lot of weight. They signed me off another week. My work wasn't too happy about it, and they just they didn't really listen. They like they assumed that I was losing my hair from raspberry taking raspberry ketones because I was trying to lose some weight. So I went back to work and I was still a bit, like not 100%, but I just carried on. I was like, I'm not gonna get down from this. I'm gonna try and try to be positive. And I also said that I'm gonna joke about the alopecia. I'd be like, oh, I'm born, I'm losing my hair. And I'd just not cry to people, I'd just cry to myself. I went back to work and I wasn't getting the support that I needed from my work as where my hair was falling out, I wasn't allowed to have my hair down and I had to have it in a, a plait at the back. But when I had this plait, you could see here that I had hair missing and I didn't. I was embarrassed so I didn't want to show that. So I said to my work, can I wear fake eyelashes because they were falling out, can I have my hair down and they wouldn't allow this. But they did allow me to wear false eyelashes because it did get to the point where it was really affecting my life. As I wasn't getting the support that I did need, I decided to leave my work. Just after I left my job, I went on holiday, went to Cyprus, had a nice holiday but obviously it had only been two months since I'd been diagnosed and I was not myself, I was embarrassed and being in a hot country where your hair is falling out and it's so thin and you have to wear a wig is really hard. So during the day I'd wear a hat, there were some days where I would just have my hair down but my hairline was quite far back so I had to hide it and I was getting sunburn on my head so I was putting sun cream on my head which was really weird and then I got in the pool one time and I just put my hair, I had enough and I was like I just got to put my hair up I want to do something that I used to do and I was on holiday put my hair up, go underwater 
But I come out of the water and most people around the pool were staring at me. This did affect me a lot and it didn't help that I had a few drinks in the day. So I stormed off to the room and was really upset. But it's something that's, that well, was bound to happen. People will stare because they don't know. And it's, well, it's not rare, it's quite common, but for to see someone out like that is what happens. Also, I, at this point, I'd lost all underneath of my hair and I had patches on top of my head. I was shaving my legs every two weeks because the growth was growing back really slow. I had no ha air, hair on my arms. My eyebrows had gone, so I was drawing them on myself. Um, and my eyelashes, I didn't have many eyelashes at all. I had to wear false eyelashes. There's also a time on holiday where I forgot that I had alopecia. I got out of the shower and there was a mirror right in front of me and I looked and I couldn't see my eyebrows and it freaked me out because I didn't know about, well I didn't recognise myself because it looked it looked strange on me. Like I'm, I've always been a person that's always had my makeup done and for me to not have eyebrows it broke me. When I was on holiday I also knew that it was the time where I did have to buy a wig because my hair was too thin, I couldn't cover it, I couldn't hide it. So I contacted my parents who ordered me a wig online. It was one to about my shoulder length, it was a plum colour and truthfully I didn't like it because I've always been the type of person to have long hair. I've always worn hair extensions and I just, I thought a brown one would have been better because that was my natural hair colour. When I got home, I went, well obviously I got home, I went into my room and my wig was there. And I just looked at it and I was like, well, this is going to change my life now. Because as soon as you start wearing it, it's probably most likely going to be wearing it all the time unless your hair grew back. And I put it on and I looked in the mirror and I didn't even recognise myself. And I cried because I didn't want to wear a wig. I was, i just turned 20 and I, did, I hated it. I didn't want to wear it. I knew I had to go out in public wearing the wig straight away because otherwise I'd hide it took, like behind doors. And I didn't want to do that because I knew that would really affect me and it would set me into depression. So I went downstairs wearing my wig. I was really nervous and I didn't feel normal. Like I, just, I didn't feel me at all. I felt like everyone's gonna stare. And there was like, it looks lovely. And I just, I just said, I don't feel right. I don't, this isn't me. I don't wanna wear a wig. I went to Westfield and we had Nando's. And when we was walking around Westfield's, I was really edgy because I felt like everybody was staring at me. And it's, this was also the first time that I'd ever put a wig on. I didn't know how to wear it. I thought it was gonna fall off because I didn't know how to tighten it but it stayed on, thank God. On the way home, I had a bit of a breakdown because I just felt like everyone was staring, but realistically there wasn't, but it was me, the way I felt, and it didn't feel normal, It's that's what it felt like to me. I started my new job after I started wearing a wig, and they're really supportive, they let me wear a wig, any colour, any length, full eyelashes, but I wasn't right, I really was not right. I was crying myself to sleep, I stopped having showers and started to have baths because I couldn't bear the hair falling out when I was washing my hair. I decided to leave work after three weeks. I come home, well my mum phoned the doctors and said my daughter's got come because she's not right. And I went to the doctors, I couldn't even speak, I was shaking, I wasn't eating at this time properly. And they told me I had depression. I didn't, I didn't know, I, well like I didn't know much too much about depression because <coughs> I had no one around me had suffered depression before um, and they put me on tablets and I was on started on a low dose and then my dose got built up and up over the couple of weeks. I was just spiralling out of control, didn't want to leave my house, would lie in bed, would sleep all the time, would struggle, to, like I'd sleep during the day all the time but I'd struggle to go to sleep at night and I'd lie there awake. And I just wouldn't talk to anyone about it. I'd talk like minimal about it, but I wouldn't talk about how I was I was trapping it all inside, which was the worst thing that I could have done because this this what caused my depression. I got my eyebrows tattooed on. I got them done at Tracy Giles in Knightsbridge. She does that all the celebrities and they were great at first, but they wasn't dark enough. I wasn't as happy with them because when I went they have to match your hair colour, but I didn't have hair and my wig well, I had hair, but not a lot, and I had a different colour wig on. I had a light brown on, and they matched it to that colour, and not my hair colour, because I didn't take my hair off to show them, well, my wig off to show them, because I was embarrassed, that, so that was my fault. I had them done twice, they really hurt, and they lasted 
well, I still, well, they're still there now, but so faint. When I wasn't working, my mum wanted me to see a dermatologist, but I didn't know dermatologists knew stuff about alopecia. I didn't have any clue. And I went, well, I went to the doctors, got an appointment, but two days before my dermatologist appointment, my hair loss was so severe, I'd lost all my, le all my leg hair, my arm hair, eyebrows, eyelashes, I had no pubes, all my hair on my head, most hair on my head, it was all, I literally had just two patches here of hair, a couple of bits of fri in my fringe, um, because I cut myself a fringe in, and my mum's friend cut me in a bob to make it look thicker, but obviously nothing, they didn't last long because my hair was just falling out so quickly and I'd only been diagnosed three months before. So it was really ra like rapid of how quick my hair fell out. I was supposed to have the dermatologist appointment, but two days before my mum booked one, a private one. I went to the private dermatologist with my dad and I looked around and I was the youngest person there and it affected me. And I also went with a fluffy hat that I would wear because at this point I was either wearing a wig or a hat um, and they tested my hair, they pulled out a hair and it literally just fell out so they said there's no strength um, and she gave me some steroid creams um, that I had, there, were two, there was two and I had to apply them on each side of the head to see if one side of the head hair would grow quicker but I didn't stick to it because I hated the feeling of my head and I didn't want to f ever feel my head um, and with other people doing it as well, I just I didn't like it. And on the way out of the dermatologist, I remember my dad said to me, it's going to get to a point where you're going to have to wear a wig um, all the time when you won't be able to wear a hat. I didn't believe him because I was still in denial that I had alopecia. But then two days later, I had my NHS appointment and I was given a lot more information about alopecia. I wanted to get offered steroid injections to help hair regrowth, but it was too severe for me to get them. In December, I'd been thinking for a while, a few weeks, that I wanted to shave my head because I couldn't stand it. I was, it was upsetting me having hair everywhere. There was hair on the floor, hair on the bed, and it's embarrassing because you can't help it. So I shaved my head. I didn't tell anyone. I remember I came out of the bathroom with my hood up I said I'll shave my head. My mum wasn't too happy about it. No one around me was that happy. No one wanted me to shave my head because of the diagnosis that I had. It, it just wasn't me. I remember I looked in the mirror straight after I'd done it and I, just, I couldn't stop crying because I didn't want it but I had to do it for my sake because it was getting me down seeing all of the hair everywhere. I also used to teach my niece that I had good and bad hair. When she was looking at me without my hair on, I'd say I had bad hair. I'd hold my wig up and I'd say this is my good hair. And that's the way I helped like my niece deal with it. I went back to work in March after a few months and it helped me a lot. But I'll get back onto that one later because I'll be doing another video. How I feel today, I'm okay. I've had hair regrowth but I've had over the last two weeks my hair has started to fall out again. I've shaved my head yesterday because... I was getting upset again, waking up in the mornings with hair on my pillow, but this time when I looked in the mirror I was fine because I was so used to me being without hair and it warms on you after a while and I'm over my depression now and I'm much more happier in my life. Uh, when I suffered depression, I suffered depression for nine months. I was on tablets for around seven months. Um, because I was depressed for quite a while before I went on them because I was in denial and I didn't tell anyone of how I felt. Um, I was in fact suicidal but I didn't want to tell anyone that because I knew it would break them and I felt like I was crazy. I didn't feel, it just wasn't right to say oh, I'm 20, I've got alopecia, I'm depressed, I'm suicidal and I was, I was just so embarrassed. So when I come off my tablets it was the best thing I'd done and I'm happy that I've got through it and now it's just a way to cope with what I have. In March 2016 I decided to get a tattoo. I'd always wanted a tattoo but it took me so long to decide because obviously they're on you forever. I wanted it to have a great meaning so I got it meaning of uh, coping with my alopecia and being in depression and I got this tattoo. It says strength with the infinity sign which means you're strong and it keeps on going and going. So thanks for watching. My main objective of making this video was to share my story 
and to support other people living with alopecia. I just want to help other people and say it's okay to talk about it because I held my in for so long and now I'm happy that I have spoke about it and it's helped me deal with it in a better way. Yeah, so one last thing. Yeah.